Hey guys, so today I want to talk about how to keep your songs sounding interesting. For some of you, maybe you write a riff and you just get bored really easily and you feel like you have to write a hundred riffs just to keep the song interesting. Maybe some of you have got some old songs that you still like but you're just not really sure how to spice them up. Um, they just feel maybe a bit too repetitive or too redundant. So what I want to show you is how you only need just a, a handful of riffs and with just a few slight variations you can keep things sounding very interesting and have a very impactful arrangement. So we're gonna look at the song I wrote here called A Place to Call Home. Now I actually wrote this song about eight years ago, but I started this project and I never finished it. And what I've decided to do recently is to go back and finish all of my unfinished projects first before starting new ones. I went back and listened and I actually liked the core elements of the song, I just thought it needed a few changes here and there. I want to show you how I was able to write with the strengths of the song. Even though my style has changed a little bit, I'm a little more uh, technical and progressive these days and the song is a bit more metalcore, I was still able to write something that complemented the core elements of the song. So let's go ahead and listen to the intro and the first verse. If we move on to the pre-chorus, you'll hear that the chord progression is actually the exact same thing. The rhythm just kind of picks up a little bit. Okay, so all of that is fine. For a listener hearing that song for the first time, it's all new to them, so it's it's not going to get old, it's going to be interesting, especially when you add the vocals to that. The vocal melody slightly changes, but we'll talk about the vocal melody in a little bit. So, so far, not much change. Now, as we transition into the chorus, um, I actually like what I did here, which is I, I do kind of a key change. I love finding a chord that is shared in more than one scale and kind of using that as a way to transition from one key to another. I don't specifically plan out the key, I'm just using my ear with all of this. When you're playing a one key, the listener's ear gets accustomed to that key. And so wherever you go from there, it can be a bit predictable. So when you change the key and all of a sudden you're going somewhere that's out of scale, it kind of keeps the listener on their toes like, whoa, that was interesting. <laughs> Okay, so here's where the first big change comes. Now, originally, that chorus would actually continue, but the problem was I had that happening at every single chorus. An easy way to keep the chorus more interesting was to cut that section out. So we just kind of give the listener a little taste of the chorus, and then we cut back into the verse. We get back into verse two, what are you gonna do? <laughs> you know, you can't do the exact same thing, which is what I originally had. Rhythmically, the guitars are actually doing the same thing but I was able to take advantage of the drums here and play off of this distinctive rhythm. So instead of just keeping like a consistent beat that works, now the drums are playing something that actually syncs up with the specific hits that the guitars are playing. We also incorporate uh, guitar harmonies. I don't know if you caught that. It, it's similar enough to be appreciated, because sometimes you hear a part that you really like and you want to hear it more than once, but you don't want to overdo that part to where it loses what makes it special and what makes it stand out. Now, when we get into the pre-chorus, this has that more consistent upbeat rhythm, so I wasn't sure I could pull off the same trick. So what I did was I added uh, a lead guitar to play over that. And I also made some distinctive changes on the drums. You'll hear a, a polyrhythm on the ride. If you listen to the lead guitars, they're not even doing that much. It's not like you needed to play a solo there. You just needed something to add to that intensity and that drive. So now we get to the second chorus. Now the first part of it 
plays the same as the first course, but it's going to continue. So interestingly, the second half of this course does change from the first half. The rhythm kind of picks up more. That probably was enough of a change to keep it sounding interesting, but I just felt like it needed some lead guitar. The lead guitar, just when used in the right way, it adds a lot of energy, a lot of top end to your song. So I'm gonna go ahead and play this again. I'm gonna add the vocals so you can kind of hear what they sound like without the lead guitar and then adding the lead guitar back in there. Alright, so it's not bad, but it's so much better when you add these lead guitars. Check this out. It just adds another emotional layer to the song, especially at that particular section. So next we get to the bridge slash guitar solo, and I actually didn't really change up much from the original arrangement. I had a lot of good ideas back then, but with more experience and becoming a better musician, I sort of understood what I was trying to do and how to make it better. I like the way the solo sounds, but I wouldn't call it a super shreddy solo. And so there was a part of me that almost thought I could write something better than this, but melodically, I still really like the way it sounded. So for any of you guys who maybe you're not the greatest shredder, but you have a song and you're like, man, I could use a solo there. A few ways you can make your solos interesting, um, one, focus on melody, you know, just make it a really catchy solo, but you'll hear in this example that all the instruments are very much in sync. Like, it's not just a beat and a backing track with the, the melody over top. There's certain parts where the drums, the guitars, and the bass are all sort of um, playing a syncopated riff. So, so just pay close attention to that. It's the same exact chord progression, but every few measures it changes the way it's played just to stay kind of in sync with the, the movement of the guitar solos. So then we get to this final course, and um, this was actually something that I had in mind when I originally wrote the song. I wanted all the instruments to cut out and just have the single guitar and then have it fade back in. So I've just got one guitar here. I've, I changed to kind of a crunch setting, not so much of the distorted tone, and it's just a single guitar that's panned up the middle, so it sounds kind of small. And then what's gonna happen is when the other instruments are kicking in, you'll hear that the guitars, I played the chords, and then I have those chords fade in and then it all kicks in at once. And then we proceed to playing the second half of the course, which is basically the same as the second course. <laughs> So if you look back over the song, the song has three courses and they're all different. They're all very similar in terms of the progression itself, but the way that progression is presented is different. The first time, you just get a sneak peek of the first half of the course. Second time is really when you hear the full course. And then the final course, we get sort of this stripped down version of the first half and then we kick back in um, to the full intensity of the second half. So those were some of the changes I made to the music itself, but don't forget about the vocals. Don't worry about the music holding the full responsibility to stay interesting. Sometimes the way the vocals are presented can help a song stay interesting. In the first verse, we have pretty much just straightforward, just singing with the verse. This prison inside of me Concealing what I believe The potential is obvious too scared to set it right. So when we get to the second half, again, it's the same chord progression, even though the rhythm's picking up. However, the vocal melody changes, so that's already probably enough. But to kind of push it further and just to really establish that this is a different section of the song, you can use effects. So in this particular section, I've got sort of a distorted radio effect on my voice. Break down the walls. Show me your heart. This is the place where I fall apart. 
So we've got distorted vocals and we've got harmonies coming in at certain parts. Harmonies are a great way to make your song sound more interesting. Because a lot of times we write just the main vocal part and you know, it works to sing along with the song, but if there isn't much variation to the vocals, it can get kind of old. So adding in some harmonies can really reinforce that part and make it sound a lot better. So we get to the first chorus here. Let's listen to it without harmonies and then listen to it with harmonies. gives it a little more fullness and bigness, which is what you want in your choruses. A lot of times verses, it's okay to have those single vocals, but in the chorus, you almost always want some kind of backing vocal. It depends. There's, there's always going to be exceptions, but in this case, um, that was something that really helped a lot. A song like this that isn't so complex, like a lot of technical metal, you can really use more layers in your arrangement. So when we get to the second verse, I already mentioned that musically, uh, we had the drums kind of syncing up and we have the guitars harmonizing, uh, but there's not a huge change. However, if you look at the vocals here in verse two compared to verse one, it's a big difference. In verse one, it's just one vocal. In verse two, we've got these other effects here. We've got a little repeat here. There's just this one line that kind of echoes. But once again, there's a couple lines where I've got some harmony. And then this last line, I've actually got some harsh vocals coming in just to kind of give some more oomph to that, that specific line. And I've also got some whispers, which are kind of an interesting layer to add. I promised a destiny. But I won't trust what I cannot see. Mother will tuck me in to this coffin and bury me. So you can hear how, you know, just a few simple layers bring so much more life to that section. The pre-chorus, because we've got the lead guitar, there wasn't much reason to change the vocals. It's kind of the same thing, distorted vocals. Then we get to the chorus. Once again, we've got backup vocals. So if you listen to the main melody, just to keep it from sounding like the first chorus, you can hear that I added a little run in there just to give it some variety so it's not the exact same thing as the first part. For the final course, we kind of uh, follow the music here since we have sort of a stripped down version with just the single guitar. We've got this distant vocal, so it sounds like I'm like way back in the room, and then when everything kicks in, the vocal is back present and in your face. And there you go. Um, hopefully looking at this, you can see that the chord progression itself is actually very simple. It's like three or four riffs that kind of just repeat. But just for making a few slight variations add up and add interest to the entire song. So even though each section sounds familiar, it's different enough to still be interesting. So anyway, I hope this kind of gives you some ideas of what to do with your own music. Um, and start paying attention to these kind of things in your favorite band. Listen to some music that you like and really pay attention to what's going on in the background. Try to compare, you know, verse one to verse two and, and figure out what the artist did differently to keep the song interesting. And you can take these things, adapt them to your own songs and make them better. So I hope you found this helpful. Until next time.